Hello everyone and welcome to the continuation of programming the finite element method using MATLAB. In this video, I will start programming something called the controller. The controller is going to automate most of the things. I want the STR controller to be kind of the hub that includes all the data I have defined, performs analysis for me. It's kind of a better way of organizing code and you will see what I mean by that when we define the controller. Now, for those of you who are programming geeks, I'm kind of a fan of the MVC programming paradigm, which means model, view, and controller, where I have the model, which is str node and str line and stuff, and a controller, which I will be defining, and a view, which I will let the controller control for now, but later maybe I will do GUI components that are independent from the controller and that access the controller. But that's too much information for now. For now, I'll be defining my controller. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, now as per usual, I click the plus button here and I will save and I will call it str controller. I kind of like giving everything str for structure because maybe later I would have dynamic controller or something. I'll keep it str controller now. Here, since it's a class, I will class dev it to be str, str controller and I will end it. Now here, this is the controller that should include all the information about the model we have. Now for this, it needs properties. One of the properties it needs is a list of all nodes that have been defined and I might call them str nodes, a list of all lines that have, de have been defined, because later this controller is going to be responsible for performing the analysis. And when somebody performs the analysis, you're gonna be cycling through all the elements and creating the stiffness matrix out of it. So the controller must know them. It also must keep tabs on the str node ID and the str line ID, because the user is not going to be expected to keep track of all the IDs he defined, I want the controller to do that for him. Now I will initialize the str line and node IDs to zero because I don't want the user to control that. This is like automatic, I am initializing values here. Now there's gonna be a lot of other things that will be added, but for now, I only keep it simple. Here in the methods now, I am going to define methods are needed for the str controller. The first method, of course, is the constructor. So function object equals str controller. And I will keep it empty for now. Maybe later I will initialize the str nodes and lines, but for now I'll keep it empty. Then I'm going to make a function for each individual model element like str node. I'm the function that adds one, deletes one, and modifies one of those. However, I will only have now a function that adds an str node. So I'll call it add str node. Now here, the first thing is by MATLAB standards, you need to pass in the object, which is a reference to its own self. I like to call it object, but some other programming geeks like to call it self, but I like to call it object. Then the user is gonna give me the x, y, and z. So the user is expected to give me the x, y, and z of the str node, and I am expected, or the controller is expected, to, the, to do the definition for him, including having a tab on the ID and changing it. Let's take a look how it looks. Now here, I must add me a to-do here. I must check for duplicate nodes later. What I'm saying is, if a user tries to define an str node at coordinates that already have an str node, then I must refuse access and I must give him the node at that location instead. I haven't done this yet, but I will keep this for later. Now here in the definition, I'm gonna define me a node. And look, how is this function working? The function is going to be accessed from the outside. The user is going to pass in the x, y, z, and the function will give him back a node. So I must toss back a node to him. And how do I do this? By constructing a node for the guy. And for this, it needs an ID, x, y, and z. Now the x, y, and z are here, but the ID hasn't been defined yet. Now, I am going to give the ID myself. For now, I will let the ID equal zero just for debugging purposes. So what did I create here? I created the controller and I created the function that says S add str node. So now I'm going to my main function and instead of the user keeping tab of the ID, I will delete everything and I will now create a controller. I call it controller and this equals str controller and the constructor is empty. So we have the controller defined now. 
Let's start testing the controller by basically saying controller dot, I don't know, dot what. Let's push the tab button and it says add str node and other things. You can see those other things because the access to those things is public. I don't think that's a good idea, by the way. And I talked about the accessibility before. So now I think I will leave this to access equals private because I don't want anybody to define, change those things. So here now, if you push the tab button, you only see this because this is the only thing that you have access to. I will have the first node to be 000, zero, zero and the second node to be 500. Zero, zero. And uh, of course, I will capture this in node one and I will capture this on node two. And then I will basically ask node one to tell me what it is and ask node two to tell me what it is. Let's F5 and see. And it seems to be working, but not really. What happens here? If you want to know exactly what happens, you can click here to open a breakpoint, run, and then step in. If you step in, you get inside the function that creates the controller, which is an empty function, which means you go out. Then you ask the controller to create a node. This goes to the corresponding function. Notice I passed in 0, 0, 0. So now in the str controller, the x has a value of 0, the y has a value of 0, and the z has a value of zero. Now, because our programmed ID equals zero, this means it will be always going to be zero. And you see how the function is constructed. I'm asking to add an str node and I'm passing the node back. The node needs to be created and passed back. Now, that's why I'm capturing it here because I want to capture the node that got passed back. All right. Now, here, if you step in again, you will get to the typical node constructor, which constructs the node for you. And then it passes it back to the function, which in turn, gives you node one. If you hover over it, like let me step again. If you hover over it, you can see it defined in its full glory. So I'm only going to step to kind of skip the entire thing. So you can see node two has been defined and then node one to string gets called out and node two dot string dot called out and the execution ends. There is a problem because I'm always using ID zero, which is dangerous because I must flip and switch the ID. I need to prepare that. STR node ID is the thing that keeps tabs on the node IDs that I'm using. So I'm going to use it, right? But before I use it, it doesn't work like that because STR node ID is part of the controller, which is the object here. Meaning I would call it by saying object to STR node and this will be working. But there is still a problem. If you run the program again, by going to main and just hitting the run button, you can see we are still at zeros because the str node ID has never been changed, it was always zero. So it means that I must change it first, object.str node ID. Now you cannot simply say plus plus like in other programming languages. No, you have to do it by hand, something like this. Now this should finish the problem. Unfortunately, it doesn't. If you run again, you see two nodes at one which is kind of odd. What happened? If you put a breakpoint here, run to the breakpoint and step in, you can see that str node was zero. I mean, if you stand here, you can see, oh, it has no properties. That's a lie. It has no uh, public properties. And that's why I cannot see it. It's a shame, I would really like to see it. Let me declare it now. I will, I will stop using the access for debugging purposes because you saw what it did. It, it, it just allowed me to see everything, which is kind of odd. Later, I might change the access uh, things. So I run again and step in. You can see str node is zero. Next step, you can see str node is one, which is perfect, meaning that the object now has an str node of one, as you can see here. Now, if you step out, you should hover over the controller and you should see a one, right? But it doesn't, it's a zero. It seems that the effect that happened here has no effect whatsoever on the str controller. You can see it's back to zero. And that's right, because by default, MATLAB passes objects as a value, not a reference. To switch this to reference, you have to inherit from a class called handle. The class handle basically keeps track of any changes and allows those changes to be retained. It's like passing the object as reference. This is the inheritance sign, and handle is the class that makes the controller change values and retain those values. So whatever you change here is retained for the rest of the program. So, okay, let's try again. Let's run and indeed you have node one and node two. And if you stop here 
and run again, you can see that the controller has str node zero. If you step, you can see controller has str one because it got incremented here. And if you step again, uh, not step in, step again, you can see the controller has str two. And you can even make make a third one. But that's perfectly fine. If you say node three equals, for example, ten, and then you ask node three to be uh, printed out, then this works perfectly fine. You can see node one, node two, and three. So I think they have done something fantastic now. We still have to automate the thing here and add it to the list, but that's something for later. Anyway, this is the kernel of the STR controller. We're going to take a lot of time here. This is going to be the major piece of, of, of code. Now, once again, the entire code is going to be available for the DM members for them to download, or you could just write with me and have your own code available. That's everything I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed. And in the end, I want to give an STR controller size shout out to my dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as the support of the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos up for on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. In the end, I hope that you enjoyed the video and you find it beneficial. If you have enjoyed the video, then please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting and so on. Especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.